welcome back. I hope you had a good break. I hope you got your calculators ready because now we're going to do some calculations and we're going to do some explanation questions because the two go together. So let's get going. All right. We have a soccer player who kicks a ball with an average force of 21 newtons for 12 seconds. Average force here means F net. We're going to simplify these to only looking at F net. We're not going to try and confuse you and do Newton's second law and do all sorts of weird things in this section, okay? We're going to keep it simple. What we're going to calculate is the impulse provided to the soccer ball, and then we're going to calculate the mass of the soccer ball if the ball's velocity changes from 4 to 2 in the opposite direction, okay? So, first of all, he kicks a ball with an average force of 21 newtons for 12 seconds. We want the impulse provided. I gave you this equation. I can't start here. I'm not looking at change in momentum. Because impulse doesn't have its own symbol, if I'm going to calculate impulse using F net and delta T, I have to write out the word impulse. So we're going to go impulse equals F net delta T. Therefore, I'm now going to put in that I've got 21 newtons for 12 seconds. And we're going to take out our calculators because they're very important to us. So let's use our calculators. We're going to go 21 times 12, and we get 252. 252 newtons. They want the soccer, the average force on provided to the ball. So this is um, the player. Oops, whoopsie. Let's just go back there. Just having moments. This is the player on the ball. Okay, so this is the force that the soccer player, well, the impulse that the soccer player is exerting on the ball. I haven't put the right units. It's Newton seconds. Almost got that wrong. Newton seconds, be careful. Because we're talking about force, it's easy to forget the seconds as well. And remember, it's not per second, it's just seconds, Newton times seconds. We now know what the impulse is. Now they say to us that they want us to calculate the mass of the soccer ball if the ball's velocity changes from 4 meters per second to 2 meters per second in the opposite direction. So first thing we know is I know that F net delta T is 252 Newton seconds. The situation says to me that my soccer ball is going four meters towards the player and then is going two meters away from the player. What we have to remember is that impulse is a vector. By default, we didn't even think about it, we've actually determined which direction is positive because we got a positive answer at the end and that answer was the ball, was the player on the ball. So that tells me that this direction with my, di with my diagram, so to the right, is positive. That also means for me that the initial velocity was negative. They want mass. We're now going to use the fact that we know that F net delta T equals M delta V. I know F net delta T, it's 252. I don't know the mass, and we're going to be going VF minus VI. So 252, here's my mass, and my velocity ended at 2, started at minus 4. That then tells me I'm going to go 252 equal to 6m. At this point, I know I'm going to get a positive answer for mass. I have to get a positive answer for mass. 
If you do this and you end up with a negative answer, you've made a mistake. Mass is not a vector. Mass is a scalar. Mass can only be positive. So be careful. If you get a negative, go look back. You've done something wrong with your signs. You've done something wrong with direction. Let's put this in the calculator, though, because I know I can't do this in my head. Divided by 6. And we get 42 kilograms in an exam. If you get an answer of 42 kilograms for a soccer ball, I'm sincerely hoping you're going to go, something's wrong. Soccer ball should not be 42 kilograms. Obviously, something's wrong. There must be something wrong with the information I gave you. It's fine for now, but in the real world, soccer balls are not 42 kilograms. We'd never be able to kick them. But it does explain to me why the soccer player was in contact with the ball for 12 seconds. Because it took a lot of effort to get it to move if it's 42 kilograms. And he probably broke his foot in the process. We're not going to worry about that. Your exams are set up so the answers and the values make more sense, so they're more realistic. This is not realistic. Okay. But it doesn't matter. You got the concept. Next question. A loaded 10,000 kilogram freight train car rolls at three meters per second to the right towards a much smaller 2,000 kilogram freight train car moving at four meters per second in the opposite direction. On colliding, the two cars lock together and continue moving at 1,83 meters per second to the right. Calculate the impulse exerted on each freight train if the collision lasts 0,7 seconds. This is the second question. Calculate the net force on each freight train. They've been really nice in this question in that they've given you all the before information and all the after information, and then they want you to calculate impulse and then F net. Let's start with the first part. We have our 10,000 kilogram freight train car, which is going at three meters per second to the right. Then we have our little 2,000 one, which is going at four meters per second to the left. They collide, and afterwards they're one object, and they're going at 1,83 meters per second. I'm trying to think if I, I did get myself in. Now, I need you to be aware of something. When I calculate the impulse, on the freight train cars. I know they stick together, but I'm not going to use the combined mass. I either have to look at the 10,000 kilogram car, or I have to look at the 2,000 kilogram car, and then work them out separately. I can't add the masses together because I want the force exerted on one, and I want the impulse exerted on the other. So we're going to separate it. Now, we need to make a decision as to the positive direction. I'm going to make to the right positive because once they had collided, they kept going right. It just makes sense to me. Let's look at the 10,000 kilogram cart. So this is the 10,000 kilogram cart. We want the impulse that it is experiencing. Actually, I want to write it like this rather. All right, we want impulse. No, that way. Ink, there we go. Impulse, which is F net delta T. Okay. But now we've got to say to ourselves, actually, they didn't give me impulse. They wanted, if you look at the first part of the question, they don't give me delta T. So, I can't use impulse as it stands, but what I can do is remember that impulse is m delta v. So, I'm using the second part of this equation. The 10,000 kilogram truck, okay, 
final velocity was 1,83. Initial velocity was 3. Let's put this in our calculators. Definitely can't do this in my head. All right, so we have 10,000 times 1.83 B minus 3, and we get minus 11,700. But remember, we always make it into a positive, so it's 11,700 Newton seconds left. And now I need to show you something. They said calculate the impulse experienced on both freight trains. This would be enough. They would both experience this. But I want to show you something because now you're going to go, how did we know to use the 10,000 kilogram truck? You didn't have to use the 10,000 one. You could have used the 2,000. If we go then and use the 2,000, let's put it in a different color so that it's, okay, so we're going to do the 2,000. All right. We want impulse. All right. And now it's 2,000. Final velocity is 1,83. Its initial velocity was 4, but it was in the opposite direction. So it's minus 4. Let's just double check that I got that. It is 4 because we don't use the wrong values. Let's put that in the calculator. Okay. So we've got 2,000 times 1.83, and that's really plus 4. Okay, now I get 11,660. And I can hear what you're saying to me. Now you're going, but those aren't the same values. One's 11,700, one's 11,660. Aren't they supposed to be the same? Absolutely, they're supposed to be the same. If you go back to the question and you rework out the final velocity, this 1,83, it's actually 1,8333333333, it's three recurring. The difference in these two values is the fact that we rounded it off to two decimal places. Let me show this to you. So if I go back here, and instead of just 3, 3, instead of 3, I'm just going to put in lots of decimals there. Let's see what happens to the number. Can you see it's getting bigger? So the number gets bigger and bigger and bigger. If I put 3, 3, 3, 3, 3 in that one, this number will start to get smaller. If I had the exact decimal, those numbers would be exactly the same. Don't worry about it. In an exam, because we know this happens with rounding, you could give me either and it would be accepted. Okay? They are both correct answers based on the rounding. So we're good with that. Don't worry about it. They should be the same. There might be slight differences because we round off our answers. Okay? So, next question. If the collision lasts 0.7 seconds, calculate the net force. There we go. So we want there we, net force on each freight train. If we look at the 10,000, so we're going to start with this one. We want F net delta T equals M delta V. Now, we know on the 10,000 kilogram train, it was 11,700, but it was to the r left, so this is minus, you can't leave that out, we want F net, 0 0.7 seconds, definitely need to use our calculators, I'm going to divide by 7, 0 0.7 on both sides, and we get 1,671. Got to remember that number. 1,000, no, 16,000. 
16,714. Apparently, I can't write numbers. All right, seven, oopsie, again. There we go, 714. And let's get the decimals, two decimal places, 2,9. This, well, that would be minus, because I was dividing by a minus. So let's just write this properly. Mm, no, nope, wrong one. There we go. So 16,714,29 newtons left. Okay, because it's against it. So I used the 10,000 kilogram truck. I get 11,000. So what should happen is the 2,000 kilogram truck should feel the same force. But what if you'd used the other answer? What if you'd used the answer to the 2,000 kilogram truck? That's fine. If we look at the 2,000 kilogram one, all right? So we know F net delta T equals M delta V. And for the 2,000 kilogram truck, we still know this is 0, 0,7, but we worked this out to be 11,660. All right, so calculator, because definitely can't do this in my head. Divided by 0, 0.7, whoops, and now we get 16,650, Oopsie. Let's see. One four. And this is to the right. Again, it is different to the one we worked out for the 10 kilo, 10,000 kilogram truck, but it's okay. It's because of that rounding right at the beginning that we got this. Don't stress about it. Both are correct. In an exam, they will only ask you to work out the force on one and then ask you what's the force on the other because we're testing, do you understand Newton's third law? So they should experience the same force but in opposite directions, okay? Impulse comes down to Newton's third law. Very important. So now we get to the questions that really get a little hairy for us. You are traveling a bus, it should be in a bus, when an insect traveling in the opposite direction suddenly splatters on the front window. Okay, how does the force the insect exerts on the bus compare to the force exerted by the bus on the insect? That's the first question. How does the change in momentum of the bus compare to the change in momentum of the insect? Second question. Does the bus or the insect experience a greater acceleration? Mm. So, first question, how does the force the insect exerts on the bus compare to the force exerted by the bus on the insect? And I can all hear you going, the bus exerts a bigger force on the insect. Nope. Why? Newton's third law. When the insect hits the bus, they exert the same force on each other. It's tiny. The bus doesn't feel it because the bus is so big. The insect, on the other hand, because it's so small, absolutely experiences the force. But the force is the same. They are just in opposite directions. So when they say, how do they compare? The force is equal. But in opposite directions. That's the first one. Please, guys, this is so important for you to get because they ask this often, comes up in lots of types of questions. Then they say, how does the change in momentum compare? If they experience the same force, they must experience the same change in momentum. So remember, impulse is F net delta T equal to change in momentum. 
They're experiencing the same force for exactly the same amount of time, which means delta P is the same. So change in momentum is equal, but opposite in direction. First two questions, straightforward. Last question, and this is the very important one. Does the bus or insect experience a greater acceleration? Here they want you to remember that acceleration is change in velocity over change in time. We go back to the fact that F net is changing momentum, so I'm going to do this as m delta v over delta t. This is all about mass. We've just agreed that m delta v is the same for both the insect and the bus. The difference is the mass. The bus has a very big mass. This value is very big. This value, the change in velocity, must then be very small because we have to keep it as a constant. I, I need to keep delta P as a constant. So if M gets bigger, V must get smaller. With the insect, the mass is very, very small. Because its mass is very, very small, this change in velocity must be very big. If change in velocity is very big, acceleration is going to be very big. So the insect has the bigger change in, has the bigger acceleration. Why? It has a small mass, so change in V is bigger. And acceleration is change in V over change in T. Therefore, it is bigger. And in fact, the reason why the insect splatters is because of its big acceleration. So in a car accident between a truck and a car, and a car which is what we spoke about at the beginning, the people in the car get more damaged, not because they experience a bigger force in the track, but because there's a bigger acceleration. There's a bigger change in their velocity, and that results in the injuries, okay? Because then they, there's that fast movement on the seat belts and the airbags, all of which you need to have when you're driving because they, they increase the stopping time and if we make the stopping time bigger, we can experience a smaller force. So you wear your seat belt, you make sure you've got airbags, you don't, that's why babies must be in car seats and all of those sort of things, it's a safety thing. Okay, so it's not about the truck exerting a bigger force, it's all about the change in acceleration. It's all about how much their velocity changes. So, what have we done? Impulse is the product of net force acting on an object and the time for which it acts. Impulse is equal to the change in momentum of an object. This first one is your definition. This is the impulse momentum theorem. Impulse, whoopsie, momentum theorem. And during a collision, both objects experience the impulse, the, the experience the same impulse. Oh wait, no, I've got it there. Never mind. Ignore what I'm doing there. Experience the impulse of the equal magnet. Ooh, that language is terrible. Experience impulse of equal magnitude, but opposite in direction. Okay. We are done with impulse, we are done with momentum, lots to think about, and we're done. So I'll see you next time.